And here we are. Oh, there we go. Here we are. Welcome everyone then to game number one of the series. And once again, do keep in mind that whenever I select something, the chat's going to disappear. We're going to see the stats of whatever that is uh, that I have selected. That also works for whichever player. It's also going to work for double selection or even for Gaia units as well. You can see the tree over here is going to hide the chat. And then whenever we don't have anything selected, pow, chat's coming right back up. So this will take about the same amount of screen space compared to what we had before with the difference that it's more symmetrical because before we had a, like a big block on the right hand side and if you're watching this on youtube as well uh, which you probably will very soon then do let me know do let me know what you think about it let me know if you find it a little bit better uh the symmetry if you find the the chat on the left hand side to distracting or if you want to keep up with chat and then i select something if that's annoying also let me know i will try to not select stuff unnecessarily so that we you know can can see the chat over here anyway taking a look then at the civilizations the players hold on in game number one We'll begin with Lithuanians on the left hand side while Nawel is gonna play on the right hand side and he's playing with Bohemians himself. We'll see for these civilizations that Hoang will get 150 extra food upon starting the game. Besides that, he also gets one extra attack on Knights and Light Chai units, but each relic garrison. Up to four relics and of course 10% fast movement skirm spearline units, while for the team bonus. Monasteries work 20% faster. Now while playing with Bohemians, we'll instead get access to chemistry and hand cannon here in the castle age. A uh, free mining camp upgrades as well. And then also villagers will be affected by uh, sanctity, they will be affected by fervor. Alright. And then on top of that, um, Bohemians over here will get a discount, a 100 wood discount on... Yeah, there we go. You see, just like that, I need to stop selecting stuff randomly. We're going to have a 100 wood discount to universities and blacksmiths, and that's going to be about it. So, for the team bonus, well, they will get 80% fast working markets, uh, and that's, that's about it. So, let's go and take a look at the map generation next. We already saw the player civilization, so let's start with the map generation for Mr. Huang. Remember that this version of Fortify Clearing is different compared to the previous one that we saw. Now, there is one downside to this overlay. I hadn't realized about it before. The map name is not visible because I have a, the time control up, as you might realize by this black bar over here. So I cannot see the name of the map. Uh, could potentially work around that well, but this, this is just the, the first version, right? So for the map generation, Huang's going to have the main goal very close to the TC inside. Of course, the walls. We have second walls. Uh, the second goal outside the walls over here on the right-hand side. And that's going to be about it. Taking a look at the right-hand side. Yeah, and will has got the main goal in the back. Second goal is going to be towards the southwest. And that'll be about it, right? Stone is very close to the TC as well. And then everything else is going to be too far away. So it's very similar. One's going to have the side goal over here. This one towards the south, right? And then we have this back goal. That'll be about it. I feel like you always like random stuff while casting. Yeah, I probably hate <laughs> you. I didn't used to do that quite as much back in the day when casting using the game client, the game spectating tool, because you couldn't see the stats while you had something selected at the same time. So I got used to it. And then with, ca with Capture H, I got used to select the stuff a lot once again. And well, now this is going to be a good exercise to try and just keep the panic clear. Fortify clearing. Yes, I know the map, but... Oh, wait! He just lost the board. This is one of the perks of this overlay, right? You... Yeah, check this out. 
can just go back in no time. Yeah, too late, man. Too late. And then I can just go back and forth like that, but... Yeah, I think I think if, if there was a hotkey for for this, that'd be better. Well, anyway, rip, Mr. P. <laughs> Absolutely. What is that, Turnip? Nova. What did Dave do? Fuel just on the way already for both of these guys and. It doesn't seem like we're going to get any action over here. Hong playing with Lithuanians. Could try to make a play for scouts. It's going to have the mobility and the Bohemians, of course, won't. And he'll most likely end up just fast gasoline. Bohemians can't get away with this. Not too difficult. 23 population. And then on the left-hand side, we see that Hong's actually going to fast castle over here as well. Blacksmith's on the way. He doesn't have the resources to go for the market yet. Especially if he's got to go for a house and the palace is over here. He should be on his way to the castle each very soon as well. It's just that Noel seems to have a little bit of a smoother transition to it. Now I'm curious, Turnip. And you know what? I'll check. What is this? Okay. <laughs> I just saw the clip, uh, turnip. Nice. Between Nova and T was what? Were they trying to judge the the best pictures or something? I don't think I saw the picture of T West. Gonna have to check that out. Castle H is gonna be here for Noel earlier, indeed. And yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, just uh, you're gonna have to copy and you can copy by by I the link that you see on chat right now. Oh, Noel is going for a four barracks though. On the left hand side, what do we have? Uh, Back home, he's got the Palisades coming up right against the edge of the map. And Hong's also gone for walls. But he's going for the walls on the back of his base. This also delayed Hong quite a bit. The walls over here delayed Hong quite a bit. And now let's take a look if he's got vision of this. He doesn't know. He's got no clue about it. And he's going back in. And he's close in the gap. So yeah, Noel's gonna try to Hong Hong! No way! The Siege Workshop's already on the way. You know, the thing about this is, it's it's always so tense. Because Noel, he's got the scout roaming around. And the scout's going to spot any units from Hong coming his way, but he won't be able to do anything to stop it. So he's got the Powerless Observer. Effect over here with the scout. Yeah. So what do we have inside the barracks over here? The one spearman only. And then inside the siege workshop, there is already a manual on the way. So now while I was playing Bohemians, he doesn't get the discount on monasteries anymore. That was changed very quickly after a release. But he could potentially still go for a monastery. He's been saving resources. If he's gone for a blacksmith, he saved resources already. And he's gone for the blacksmith, so he's already saved resources. Yes. Could potentially go for for the monastery. Interesting that if he if he tried, if he wanted to go for it rather, he probably would have gone for it by now already. So not exactly sure what to expect here.
There we go. Here come the Magnils in battle! Big shot! Once again, four villages going down. And we'll see a rain of rocks coming down. The gold miners over there. That's the only gold that Hong had available safely right then he's got this one forward but that's not going to be inside the walls anymore however because Noel has not been making a play for the center whatsoever Holland does have control of it for the most part he's got the scouts is the only player trying to collect the relics as well he already got one the monk is carrying over here he is going to end up picking all five by the looks of it, yeah. Second relic's coming in. There we go. Beautiful. Second PC on the way now for Hong in the market. But so far, he's not really been able to defend himself too well. He's got the scouts he already went for in the field age and one night. And I was finally going for more monasteries. He, he had the one over here. He went for some monks. Where's uh yeah there we go. So he's got two monks already. I just came from Dave's stream and mine your rockstar vibe on Wikipedia pick. <laughs> yeah, Turnip just shared a, a clip about that. I didn't know that it was from like right now. That is so uh nice as well. I see who on I click. Hey Adler, hey C Deep. Hope you guys are doing alright. Will you see Hoang have its DC eaten? By no whales, Magnus. So now it's going to be the red player, the one with hunger for the civic center. Especially now that Magnus is away, he's got redemption. That is a great conversion. He's got to be careful. No will could have lost most of the Magnus over there to the converted Magnus shots, and that is a nice hit over there. In the end, the whale. He's still looking a little bit stronger over here for military and for economy. He's been looking better compared to Huang for a while. And on the right hand side, we see that he's got a second DC, so he shouldn't really be falling behind too much, right? Even if Huang went for the extra DC a little bit earlier. Nice shot. Another conversion attempt over here and. You know, Noel, he's got attunement, so now he's gonna try to target the monk from uh, Hoang successfully. He does get a conversion over here, so now he's gonna have another monk, full faith, on this one. There we go. Tournament's coming in now for Hong as well. It's going to turn into a monk battle. But so far, Noel has gotten the better end of the deal. Four. Just finished researching uh, Fervor as well. Remember that's also going to be an eco upgrade for Noel because uh, the village is being affected by it. Now these guys are going to be a little bit quicker. We select one of these. We select one of these. There we go. You'll see that these are a little bit faster. Hey, Fluffy Bunny! Hello, hello, welcome. Hope you're doing alright. Pretty brave to opt into a monk battle versus Huang Lithuanians. Indeed. But so far, it's been going in favor of Noel, mainly because he had a little bit of a head start to it. Now we'll see though, the conversions are coming out. There's a lot of monks over there, only a single two! Scouts converted in the end, so it's not the worst. He does not lose in two monks, 
does get two conversions, but he will get a monk right back over there. He's going after it. He gives up, though, and the monk was very low HP. In the end, the monk's going to go back towards the tower. He's going to try to go for, yeah, the rest of the units, but doesn't have enough HP to do much of anything. So now Noel is getting pushed back, but Hong, Hong's got a higher military count. He is behind an economy, though. There you are. And uh, Hoang with equal upgrades even. Looking a little bit better compared to Noel. He doesn't have willpower, but he's got Bosa. Noel is only on Dalit Bidax right now. He's only on Horse Collar. And Hoang's only on Horse Collar too, but with Bosa, he already gets the upper hand in terms of economy compared to the red player now. This is open. And bailing from here, he left the gate open, and that is the beautiful quick gate from Noel. It's not going to last for very long, though. Remember, gate foundations have zero armor, so this is just going to go down immediately. Now his coming in is just going to keep the knight over there as well. Doing a really good job of not pulling the knight away and not closing the gate by mistake. So here come the rams, and here come the monks, and that is a lot of villagers trying to get the castle up over there. Scorpion even on the way. We'll see if he can get much of anything done over here. It's going to be very difficult even for Hong to micro this many monks to try and prevent the castle from coming up. And I think this one is coming up for sure. And there we go. He does get the castle up. He's going to take a few monks down with it. But Hong has successfully fended Noel's aggression off for the most part. We still have the manos over here. But there are no monks anymore from Noel. There is no defense. Try and keep the manas alive. So with one manel, uh, Hoang, if Noel is not paying too much attention over here, he could potentially take it down. You catch him deleting the last scout after he got a kill. Yeah, that that was good. But the other one, he couldn't really make use of it too much, unfortunately. For a castle on the way now for Han as well. So putting pressure though, Huang that is. I'm just gonna try and stay beyond the range of the castle. We don't have fletching, we don't have barking arrows, so Noel's castle is not anywhere near as effective as it could be. And by the way, guys, did you, did you realize we have the chat on the left-hand side now? We don't have the, the thick chat panel on the right-hand side anymore. I don't know what you think about it. The chat's going to be visible so long as we don't have any selected. The moment we select something, it's going to hide itself. Here we go. Oh, nice conversion for Noel. It's gonna be on his way to the Imperial Age very soon. Hong is already there. It's gonna be the blue player waiting for red in the next stage already. Hi, Whitebeard! Hi, welcome. Hope you're doing alright. Just now how cool your Wikipedia picture <laughs> is. Thank you, Fineball. Appreciate it. Of course, credit for the picture goes to Jamila. That's the photographer who actually took the pictures. There are a bunch more, but I just chose that one for Wikipedia. Here come the light chai though. Hong is taking some time to mass the units that he needs, but it's not, it's not going to take too many for him to already start getting some pressure going to get some damage done over here. And he gets to the Imperial Age earlier compared to Noel. We saw this before. And even though he lost one of the light chai to conversions over there, and the uh, two remaining ones are very low HP. He disrupted the economy from Noel a little bit over there and back home. 
Where are Noel's mounts? It seems like they are gone. Yeah, they, they probably got taken down. I don't know if Hoang went for a defensive mount over here or something, because I don't think he's got a defensive siege workshop anymore. This one is forward. So, it doesn't seem like he took it. Probably he just got them down with... With units, perhaps, or, or got the conversions, maybe. Uh, I don't see anybody with Manil, so I don't think it was a conversion. I think he probably just took it down. Maybe with scouts, or even just villagers, honestly. Wouldn't be surprised. Rostrovich is here, ready from Holang. One of the perks of getting to the Imperial Age earlier, of course, and Noel. Noel is only now going for redemption so long after the first conversion came in from... Hong against his Magnus. He's taking so long to catch up to Hong in terms of upgrades. And we saw this be the case with economy, and that's not going to stop being the case right now. As a matter of fact, we see Wheel Barrow coming in for Hong, while Noel doesn't have it. Uh, Hong's still the only player with both, so Noel doesn't have it. Hong was the first player to go for redemption. Noel's only got it now. And block printing is coming in for Noel. If we take a look at Hong's monk. You will see that he already has block printing as well. And even he just finished researching Theocracy, which will make it significantly easier for him to micro uh, large numbers of monks. Now, with this castle going down, and then the TC going down next very soon. Hong's gonna put himself in a position to start raiding a little bit more heavily, especially now. In the Imperial Age, it's gonna be harder to put a stop to the bull player. Although he doesn't really have too many upgrades for the light chat themselves, because they ignore armor, they are still going to be quite effective at taking villagers down. All he's got to do is take the defenses down, uh, basically the castles, the TC, so that there is no running away from the red player. And then Hoan puts himself in a very, very nice spot. Here we go. Fantastic. DC crumbles and here come the light shine. The conversions are coming in though. He's gotta be careful. Remember though, Hong got theocracy. Now Will is only getting it now. 13 monks for the red player, 8 monks for the blue player. So far it's been the blue player to get the better end of the deal. Conversions on the way from Noel as well. Juan's gotta be careful over here. He can get the counter conversions back, but of course, with a smaller amount of monks and both players already with theocracy, it's always going to go in favor of the red player if it just comes down to converting units, right? The only way that Juan comes out on top over here if he is if he manages to get some conversions against Noel's monks, or if he manages to get the monks down and he's going after the monks right away. So the red player in the last 30 seconds gone down from about 13 monks down to 8. And Hong did manage to get a ninth monk out. Now it's going to be seven for Noel. And the Light over here getting so much damage done. So much so that very soon would be surprised to see exactly this. Noel calls the GG guys as Hong takes game number one. And puts himself on the lead over here after enduring a fantastic push from Noel, which seemed. Like it was going to be enough for the red player to seal the game. Hoang not only survived, but he came back with a force. Showing a will how to really Hoang. Let's take a look at the achievements. We'll see for me, Taria, better KV for Hoang. For economy, we have a better economy for Noel in the end. But it's only going to be about 620 extra resources, while for military it's a much better KD for Hong. So that goes to show, of course, that even if he was behind an economy, the better KD over here put them in a much better position. Also, for conversions, it was very close between both these players. So if you were to add the conversions to the kills and the losses, right, it would still be better for Hong. He ended up getting a better conversion rate over here. A better CD ratio over here compared to Noel as well. So everything was looking very, very good for the blue player overall. Well played. And what a what a great way to keep his cool under so much pressure, man. <laughs> let's uh 
Let's check what we get for game number two. That was such a funny discussion in Dave's chat. Yeah, I'm still not really sure what that was about. Are they trying to find the skinniest um, Age of Empires person? I don't know, because then he said in the end, I think it's between Nova and T-West, but I don't know. I, I, I've only seen a face shot of T-West from when he cast with, with Mimb. So I don't know. I want that Jamila to take my picture too at some point, or more likely I will copy that vibe. <laughs> yeah, feel free to do so. Uh, I actually got that picture taken yes. on a photo shoot. Basically because I needed a profile picture, I, I didn't have any. And I had I had a photographer friend, so I said, Hey, can you can you take my pictures? And and she said, Yeah. So I said, Okay. I agreed on a prize and, and just got it done. There are a bunch more. Once again, that's the one that I probably like the most and I just needed the one profile picture, so. Oh! About who can fit the most hot dogs in their mouth. Oh, I do have a big mouth. Yes. So I, I can probably fit a lot of, of hot dogs. <laughs> Thank you. Hey Zan and Fineball as well. Judging from the Wikipedia pick. Yeah, I'm 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 very, very I'm a very big mouth person, I'll admit. Alright. So for game number two, let's cross the victory over here for Mr. Holong. For game number two, we saw that uh the bull player is playing with the Italians. We see that Noel is playing with Javidians over here. This is at the camera. And this version of Atacama 1490 Titans League is going to have the pawns in the corner. So it's going to be a cross between a standard Atacama and cross. You know, the, um, no pun intended. So for these civilizations, Hon will get first off 15% discount on fishing ships. A 15% discount to go up to... Yeah. <laughs> to go up to the next stage. He also gets with Italians 20% cheaper gunpowder units. Cheaper university and uh, dock upgrades. Dock upgrades. Well, for the technology, for sorry, for the team bonus, it's going to be access to condo theater from the barracks in the Imperial Age. While now, Will is playing with Dravidians, which will give him 200 extra wood upon reaching a new age. It's going to give him also 25% faster attack in elephant archers in skirmisher units, if I'm not mistaken. They also have a 50% discount on barracks upgrades. And then for the team bonus, each dock is going to provide the Dravidians with extra population support as if it was a house as well. So you'll see the dock comes up over here and he's going to go up to 25 population. So he doesn't need to go for the extra house. And in the end, you know, I would guess it's probably going to be a wash. He gets extra population over here. Meanwhile, home pays less for the fishing ships, so you go for a bunch of fishing ships and you can already get a free house up. With the difference, of course, that you also need to spend some extra villager working time, I guess. So it's probably still a little bit better for Dravidians, but just so. Hey, Perk Italia. Hi, hi. Good picture to upload, there's really good value, PR. Uh, same with editing your Wikipedia page. I have not really added any information to my Wikipedia page because I'm not registered uh, in Wikipedia as an editor. So I would have to ask somebody to do it. I got somebody approach, or I didn't really get somebody to approach to me, but uh, somebody did approach to me some time ago about including some more information on my Wikipedia page, and I was not too comfortable with it at that time. I think next year I'm going to be a little bit more comfortable about it. This is the Silver League, yes. And you can get more information, of course, by doing exclamation mark TTL. We talked about the players, we talked about the civilizations a little bit. We didn't really mention the map generation too much, so we can do that right now. And taking a look at Hoan, we'll see that he's got one goal forward. And this is just the way you expect it to be. You, you are expecting to have one of the resources forward. He's got then the secondary goal on the back. And then the main stone is towards the south. That's going to be about it. 
I think potential defense, like a tower would be really good, probably around this area, perhaps over the right hand side could potentially work as well. To provide protection to both these resources, of course. Taking a look at Noel's map generation instead, we'll see that for the red player, we have the mingle on the back, and then the secondary goal is four. Now this is a little bit easier for him to protect. If he goes for one tower over here, he should find himself in a very good spot. However, interestingly enough, this is not the best though, because he's already been going for wood on the right hand side. There we go. And he doesn't really have too many resources to collect from over here, just a stone instead. Huh. All it tells them is Navajo is an Argent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my, 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 my current page on Wikipedia is not very complete. Anybody who has ever donated on my stream already knows what my name is, but it's not public on Wikipedia. Uh, we could potentially change that next year. What is that arrow technology? Impressive. <laughs> hey, Janice Crossman. I'm pretty sure you have seen that before, right? If you've been around my stream, and I know that you have. And as the players get to the village, we see some aggression coming in. Now, Will's gonna be the one to go for it, for the most part. He's got... Militias coming out. Meanwhile, Hong's gonna try and make a play for the castle each by the looks of it. He's got only one militia over here himself, and he's going for a blacksmith. He already has the archer range, so the blacksmith is gonna be the second building he needs. But he doesn't really have at this point, though, the market to balance his economy. So, see so archer skewed up, and it's gonna take some time for him to click up. Interesting to see that Hong is completely ignoring the water. And, you know, he's got a rep over here for not being a particularly flexible player, but I have seen him play hybrid maps and water maps in the past where he does actually try to go for water, so this is still kind of surprising. Especially over here, we could have seen the uh, blue player go for probably a duck over there, and this would be so far away from Noel's side of the map as well. That he probably wouldn't, wouldn't spot it. Now it's going to be Noel instead to go for the dock on the left hand side. Meanwhile, he's putting the pressure up. He's got the scout over there with the Minotaurs as well. Not going to be able to get a village down by the looks of it. Only one hit missing. For the villager from home to go down. Noel's going to get pushed away by the archers here. And it seems like Hong will be able to defend himself successfully. But Noel's looking better, you know. Hong won't be able to pass castle. Noel's pressure over here is so much stronger with men at arms and archers. And then on the left hand side, yeah, there is another dog coming up this time around from Noel. So this would have been probably the safest place for Hong to go for a dog himself. If he had gone for one on the left hand side, well, Noel, as we can see, he wouldn't really have too many issues trying to put pressure on that one. So in the end, it's going to be two pawns favoring the red player. No pawns for the blue player. He's not going out to the castle age. He's not ahead of military units. It seems like Hoang has put himself in a position over here by not trying to go for water whatsoever. Where he's only going to be waiting, right? It's only going to be a matter of time before Noel ends up taking this one, I think. Seems to be very much... A matter of time, right? We like GPS coordinates of your building, so we can send intercontinental ballistic missile if you're not sufficiently enthusiastic about. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I had recorded some videos and stuff in the past uh, to upload to my Instagram. With my roommate's phone. And then I decided against it because I thought, yeah, this might be a little bit too too public. Because you can see the, the surroundings of my buildings and stuff. But I don't know. I guess I'm probably not known enough to, to be worried about it. 
you have to be usually massive for anybody to really try to stalk you. <laughs> so I guess I, I was probably just being overly conservative. Bunch of villagers exposed from Holang. Should be more than enough villagers to take the Minotaurs down, but we have some archers coming up over here. Hong doesn't realize about the villagers over here until he starts being targeted by the Minotaurs. And he could potentially turn around and fight. He will take the Minotaurs down here. But in the end, it doesn't matter that TC takes the Minotaurs down and Hong Hong's gonna be on his way to the Castle Age. So he does manage to go up a little bit faster compared to Noel. But yeah, you know, I, I'm not too sure about this. The red player is still definitely on the lead. He's got 11 extra workers. Should be able to go out to the castle age very soon as well. He's got 23 food workers, so it's not going to take too long for him to get the food that he's missing. And if he were to go for a market, and he is going for a market, he can actually balance his economy a little bit because he's got too much gold, right? So he can buy a little bit of food, and that's going to get him to the castle age a little bit earlier. However going to be content with just putting pressure against Hong for the time being. Yeah, and in the end, he does end up using the market over there, so he will be on his way to the Castle H a little bit sooner than he would have been able to otherwise. But still, Hong will be there significantly earlier. Because of the much smaller economy that we see from the bull player, though, he will need to clean these units up as soon as possible once he gets to the Castle H and with a single knight, he will be able to do it, but he didn't have a stable, and he's going for the stable only now. Oh, with the tower from the whale, though! Fantastic location! For the red player, pushing Hong away from the wood over here. That's the only wood line that Hong was collecting from, so if he is to go back and collect from one of these small tree patches, well, that's not going to be efficient. That's going to run out very quickly. Meanwhile, Noel keeps on putting pressure. So far, he's been able to get a single village down. But with this amount of skirmishers, he might actually be able to get another village down. If he plays his cards right and targets the weak one. Yeah, there we go. One more shot. Good unit control for Hla. Well played. Stay a little incognito because you never know what might strike you at some point. Take it from one who has personal experience with those things. I'm sorry to hear that, Flower and Dancer. And that, that is, yeah, basically the reason why I was kind of... Boy, in that regard, we'll see. What are the favorites in Silver League to advance to the Gold League? I wouldn't be able to answer that question because I do not know who all the participants from the Silver League are. I've just been finding out about the participants as we go and cast series after series. So this is the third series that I cast so far. And of course, I only know three partic uh, six participants, sorry. So I wouldn't really know. There are... 18 series for us to cover from the round of 36. I am not too sure that we're going to be able to provide coverage for all the sets from this round anymore, unfortunately. Because starting Friday, the round of 18 series will be shared to casters to provide coverage for live. So, if we want to do that, we'll only be able to cover whichever series we manage to cover between today and Thursday, right? Because tomorrow we have Double Cup 3's Grand Finals at 15 GMT as well. I'm not too sure. How many we are going to cover. So let's say that we cover 2 today, 2 on Thursday, and 1 tomorrow. That's going to be 5 plus uh, 2 that I already covered. That's going to be 7 only out of 18. In the end, we are going to end up covering less than half the, of what I would like to be able to cover. Well, regardless though. Come back to this game, and we'll get to the castle each himself successfully. We're gonna see a DC come up. There we go. It would be spoilers for Rex. Yeah, that is why we're not gonna be able to cover all uh, 18 round the 36 series because if we want to provide coverage for. The round of 18 sets live. Well, when we are done casting that, we'll already know who won the rest of the series that we didn't cast from the round 36, so... Yeah, I think we're probably not going to do it. I think we're probably not going to cover all 18 sets from the round of 36, that is. See Churik Shop on the way now for Noel. 
Still significantly ahead in worker count. A lot, it's not even close. 22 extra workers. Military count, military count's favoring Hoan. However, Nawil, Nawil's going for the chunkers. Guys, he's got archers, he's got chunkers. He's got even monks on the way. To fight the knights off and Hoan. I was coming forward with a bunch of villagers. Doesn't really have the resources to go for a forward castle, so I'm really curious as to what Hong's plan is for this. He got pushed away from the center because of the tower, right? And that is a beautiful tower location as well because it doesn't really leave the base exposed to villagers to so potentially batter it down. You can see that he even went as far as to add the palisade over there to make sure he was not going to lose that tower. And that means that Hoang is kind of. You know, hopeless for good wood control. He's going for this Lambert camp, which is going to give him some good wood income for the next three, four minutes perhaps. But then he's going to have to go for another one elsewhere and he's going to have to keep the villagers on the move at all times. And it's going to be just so hard. Definitely would have been better for Han to potentially try and make a play for either this wood line, right? Or perhaps this one, perhaps. But. Yeah, right now what he's got to work with is definitely not the best. Here comes Hoang though, trying to come into the gold and... I will realize about this right away. Went for a house. He's going to keep himself safe with this. Some crosses from away will not be enough against the Knights and Hong. Hong is so interesting to see him play. We already saw in game number one that he struggled to keep up with military count. But he was able to get so much damage done with so little. And we get to see some of these players from time to time, right? Who excel even when under the utmost pressure while Nawil on the other hand, he's being a hit for the majority of the game in terms of military, in terms of economy, but he struggled to seal the deal. Here we go. More barracks on the way. From Mr. Noel. Yeah, and Huang is going to call it GG. This is a very interesting time to call it. Basically, he loses the knights over here for the most part, and these crosses were going to take the villages down. Uh, so nothing really happened over here for him to call it GG in the sense that he was not taking massive losses, but he was about to, so he recognizes that. And calls the GG, so it will be Noel the one to take game number two. He took a little bit longer, probably, than I would have expected over here, but it's going to equalize the series in the end. And now we're going to get a four game series guaranteed at the very least. So let's go and take a look at game number three. After taking a look at the achievements, let's go for this first. And what do we get? Well, we'll see for military a better KD for Hung approaching three to two. For economy, a stronger economy for Noel, surprising no one, but the extent by which his economy was stronger is probably a little bit higher than what some would have anticipated with almost 50% extra resources collected. Actually, even higher than that. For society, we see a higher villager max count for Noel as well. And yeah, that, that, that'll be about it, so we'll jump into the next game in a moment. And we are in game number three. Welcome everyone. Home playing Incas towards the northwest. Meanwhile, Noel playing with Hindustanis towards the southeast. Hey, Pepe. Is AO2 that net back? Yes. Yes, it is. And that is huge news. It's a very, very popular tool. Namaste. <laughs> I thought that I had a noise filter, but it seems like you could very clearly hear that motorbike. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, anyway. 
Uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's great. And it's going to be under the wing of capture rich people as well. So you could hardly find more adequate people to maintain the website and keep it up from this point onwards as well. So I'm very happy about it. The API is going to, is going to work again. So if you do exclamation mark ELO, Holong or Noel, for instance, you're probably going to get a, a response, I think. I don't know if they changed the API or not. Somebody would have to try exclamation mark ELO. To see if it works, but if it works the same way that it used to before, then it, it should be okay. Exclamation mark ELO space Holang or Noel. See if it works. It's pretty much the reasonable place for the chat. Is that so? Okay. <laughs> It seems like uh, it's not working as in, uh, working as intended, so I'm gonna have to try and fix that afterwards. Thank you, Baltic. Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's it's back up. At the very least, we are not getting a timeout error, so it is working. It does come back with a few changes though. So the public chat that was there, remember the side panel is no more. I for one will not miss it one bit because it was just extremely toxic 99% of the time. So it's Fine by me if it if it's gone, you know, people they want to discuss and be toxic, there are other places to do it. And it also gave me extra work as well because I had to remove the side panel from the browser using CSS. And now it's good that I'm not gonna have to worry about it. API has adcom rank URL fetch. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, let me, let me, let me try then. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Let's see if it works now. Can somebody try? A4 to AOE2. Oh, shit. All right. Sorry. Uh, AOE2. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So, yeah. Since I have not gotten any complaints about the new chat location over here on the left-hand side, I'm going to assume that it, you either don't mind or like it. So, yeah. The command works with exclamation mark elo, not exclamation mark rank. I made it so. So keep that in mind. We haven't talked about the civilizations too much. Sorry about that. We are six minutes, seven minutes almost into the game. So let's take a look at it. Hold on. We'll be playing with the Incas over here, which means it's going to begin with one free llama underneath the TC. Each house is going to support 10 population as opposed to five. And then on top of that, the Incas also get a 15% Stone discount on buildings and villages get affected by blacksmith upgrades for infantry units starting in the castle age. For the team bonus, Incas will also have, I believe, extra line of sight on skirmisher and spear line units, two extra line of sight to find them a second. While now we'll play with Hindustanis, we'll get a discount on villages at 10, 15, 20, and 25% cheaper. We're gonna see for Hindustanis in addition to that. 25% faster attacking camel rider units, as well as plus one plus one armor on gunpowder units. And for the team bonus, two extra damage, two bonus damage against buildings from light cavalry hazard and step lancer. Oh, sorry, camel rider type units. So here comes the will. It's gonna be the first one to start putting some pressure with militias, mind you. It's got some gold miners. We know exactly what this is for. It's gonna try and make a play for archers. So let's see. It's going forward. He realized about Hoang's own militias, by the way. Now 
the Mantaran Sapker is coming in for the will. Not so much for Hong. He does have four militias though. And the hill advantage over here, favoring the red player, would definitely be good if he had the Mantaran's upgrade a little bit closer. But now, against one extra unit, he cannot really engage, even if on top of the hill. So now that he's going to have Mantaran's, he could have turned around and tried to fight. But instead, he's going to try to go after the villagers. He cannot really find a single pick over here. And Hong should be able to quick wall without too many issues. It seems to me like Noel would probably have been better off fighting. Soon after he got the Manatarans upgrade. Now that we have the Manatarans upgrade also for Huang. And the blue player will end up pushing Noel away. Basically from having one extra unit. So yeah, it doesn't seem like Noel will be able to do too much over here. Huang might be able to get some good damage done. But of course, he'll need to go forward. And get the pressure going against Noel. While the red player already has the archer range. And he's got the first archer on the way. Blacksmith's on the way now for Noel as well, and Hoang. Yeah, Hoang's fine. I wonder if the leaderboard ID needs to be changed as well. It is. It is three. Okay. For Age of Empires 2. So let me try and fix this. Try now. Oh shit. Not 13. Three. There we go. Rip. <laughs> what you gonna do? Skirmish is coming out for Hoang. Gets two extra line aside with these. Helps quite a bit. Uh, remove profile ID. Okay, let's try. Oh shit. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Up in the north, the archers are coming in, still around from the whale. Hong has already managed to get a defensive tower up. For 15% cheaper, remind. Remind you of it. 94 stone left over here. Doesn't seem like Hoang is able to pay attention to both places at once. Does not lose in a villager though. Back home. Oh, Manitar's going down from Noel as well. And the archers right now as well. Ah, oh, that was super rough for the red player who also struggled to pay attention to both places at the same time. You see, he pulled the units away up in the north from the TC. He ended up losing most of those. After he was done microing the units up in the north, then we see some action over here down the south once again. He starts controlling the units back, sending the villagers back to work. But so far, I would say that this has gone in favor of Noel still. Mainly because of Hong's idle TC time, not so much because of Noel's villager kills, right? He's only managed to get two villagers, and Hong's gotten very close to two minutes of idle TC time. And two minutes and ten seconds into it, it's going to represent already six villagers worth of... TC working time, right? Six villagers training time worth the TC idle time for Hoang. Very close to it. 15 seconds away from it. So it's going to be more like five. And yeah, in the end, that's going to be a lot more damage to Hoang's economy compared to the amount of villagers Noel was actually able to kill. So it's not too bad for the red player. Not too shabby. We take a look at the gather economy time and it's looking better for Noel. And it's going to get even better the longer the game goes, of course. With well, the extra villagers he's got to work with right now. Six extra villagers. That should amount to about 12 or actually 120 extra resources coming in per minute for Noel. 
on top of what Hong is going to be able to collect himself. Remember that Incas, they get a discount, a stone discount on buildings, but they have no bonuses that will make their economy particularly strong. So no faster work in anything, uh, no cheaper villagers or faster training villagers or anything. It's just going to be a run-of-the-mill civilization in that regard, which is also why from all the American civilizations is going to be usually regarded as the less powerful one. Even if in terms of military they are extremely versatile. Yeah, economy is not going to be the best for Incas. Scale bar the number on the way for Noel. Plus one plus one already for the scouts. We have already scale male armor for Hoan, so it's going to be plus one plus one for the Minotaurs and the Eagle Scouts. It seems though like Noel is coming out on top. Should be able to take care of the skirmishers over there. He's gotta be careful about the archers, but he's got his own skirmishers to fight the archers off. Extra scouts are coming out by the minute from Noel, so in the end he'll be the one. Cleaning these units up and take a look at Hong's idle TC time though. It's gone up from almost two minutes to well past three minutes already. He's just trying to go up to the castle age. We see a market on the way. He's got it. So he will be able to click out to the castle age significantly earlier compared to Noel, but with a much, much smaller, you know, less efficient economy so far. While Noel, on the other hand, won't be able to click out to the castle age anytime soon. It's falling behind the military count as well. And he's going for his own market on the right hand side, which will allow him to try to catch up a little bit, but he'll definitely still be on the back foot because of it. Hoang, fortunately for the army that he is going to need against Hindustanis, and that is potentially full legals over here, doesn't really need a strong economy too much. He basically just needs a bunch of gold miners, yes. And a few farmers, right? So, if he goes for extra barracks, we know exactly what to expect. It's going to be full eagle spam. And Noel, Noel, well, he's going to suffer against that so long as he's unable to get enough defensive units up himself. Yeah, eagles are already starting to come out. Only four food workers would allow him to go for. Up to double barracks production at most. Nice village pick from a whale. And Hong will need a few extra farmers, a few extra food workers, if he is to ever really get the production going for Eagle Warriors, of course. Fantastic. And fixed? Wait, what? I don't think it's uh it's fixed, is it? Ah okay, 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 okay. We're gonna try and and fix that then. Okay, try now. Nice pressure, Hong gets to the castle age finally. No Eagle Warrior upgrade on side though, just Eagle Scouts over here while Noel is going up to the castle age. In a much better position. Yeah, and he's gonna be there in about 50 seconds, he still retains a 14 worker lead. Against Hoang and while the bull player is trying to put pressure up over here, he still has only Eagle Scout, not Eagle Warriors. Quick walls coming in for Noel as well. And what will he do though once he gets to the castle age? Up in the north he's got just some goats. In terms of military, he's got Minotaurs for the most part. Should be able to take care of the Eagles, no problem, with Minotaurs. Ideally, he's gonna want to go for Lone Swords, of course.
There you go. Cast us on the way now for Mr. No Whale. That should be good enough against Eagle Scouts. Once again, with the Eagle Warrior upgrade, Hong is in a much better position, but he's been unable to go for it so far. Now he's got a strong enough economy to go for a few villagers, in addition to the Eagles, mind you. He's not going to pick up, he's not going to keep on picking up extra idle TC time, so that is good, of course, for him. We'll see. Beautiful. Another villager goes down from the whale, but Hoang is not doing anywhere near as much damage as I think he was anticipating to do over here in the castle H. I think it was a uh, probably something. I think it was probably Hoang just trying to go for full eagle spam, and he struggled to do so very much. Now that the whale managed to get the castle up, and he's got Gulam coming out. And these are not eagle warriors, but only eagle scouts still. The Gulam are actually still stronger. However, of course. Winning the numbers, right now, Noel doesn't really have too many, while Holland still has more Eagle Scouts to work with. But it's going to be only a matter of time until Noel manages to get enough to defend himself against this just fine. Until he manages to get enough to go forward and get the rates going, of course, and Hoang Hoang really needs to sort his economy out. If he was able to go for the Eagle Warrior upgrade soon after he got to the Castle Age, this would have been game over, I'm pretty sure, already. With this economy as we... Saw was not really in a in a position to do that. Here we go. Isn't it over now anyway? Well, I'm liking the Will's position, very much so. He's finally get, managed to get enough Gulam over here to fight the Eagle Scouts off. And while we have some Slingers from Hoang, I don't think it's going to be enough. Good in control for Mr. Nawil. He's pushing Hoang back. He's stabilizing back home. Well, and now this is going to put, of course, Hong in a very awkward spot. So, I am wondering... What would the game have been like if Hong had gotten a strong enough economy to go for the Eagle Warrior upgrade? Now, we we'll probably wouldn't have had enough time, wouldn't have had enough control back home to get the defensive castle up, wouldn't have been able to go for the Golden Warriors, and probably would have just gotten completely suppressed. So, it was a very interesting uh, strategy from Hong to be sure. Sacrificing his economy in order to go off faster, but in the end, he wasn't really able to maximize the play he was going for. And now, well, Noel, Noel is getting far with the Gulam Warriors. We saw this coming, of course. Our villagers could potentially go down over here. We'll see that he's trying to target those Slingers first. And yes, of course, you gotta do it! Slingers get bonus damage against the infantry type unit, so the Gulam will try to take these down first and then go after. The Eagles, back home, we have a few extra units coming now, and the Will is still struggling to keep production going as steadily as I think he would like to. But he's got a second TC on the way, so his economy is going to get even stronger while we take a look at Hoang. Hoang is, of course, not in a good position, economically speaking, whatsoever. Anyway, welcome, welcome to the channel. Thank you for the follow. Another villager goes down over here, if I'm mistaken. Yeah. Okay. And the game has stabilized for the most part, and we're still definitely looking stronger. I do find it interesting that he's trying to go for extra economy over here. 
as opposed to going for extra Gulam and just trying to seal the deal because he was the one with momentum just a moment ago and decided to make a play for economy over here instead. It's actually going to give Hong some time to get extra units out. And if Hong was to get the Eagle Warrior upgrade ever and a few extra Eagle units, of course, he would be able to start Raiden and potentially prevent the will from really taking advantage of the extra TCs and to really get ahead. We'll see though, for the time being, Hong has been prioritized and Slingers over here, which will work pretty well against the Gulam, not so much against much of anything else. Here we go. Beautiful. Two villages going down. Three villages going down from Mr. Hong. He can't really afford to take any villager losses given his very, very meager economy. And we'll see a bunch of extra units going down! As long as hidden jackpot here. Does manage to get only two villagers though. The slingers over here will be too threatening for Nawil to try and uh, take the rest of the villagers down, Will. Now Hong's got the possibility of getting some damage done himself. And there we go. That should work, given that the URL version works well. I think it might be because it was probably tailored for uh, Nightbot. I think stream elements might have a different syntax for collecting the arguments from the query. Perhaps. We'll see. I can take a look at that, of course, after the stream is over, but it might, it might just be that stream elements has a different way of capturing arguments. Nice. Clean up here. Now Will ends up taking all the slingers down. Not even close. A lot of units going down over here for Hong. And there's a third TC on the way now for Noel. Meanwhile, Hong's still going to stick to one TC. And Noel, he's been slowly but surely getting further and further ahead. In the end, while I would still have preferred for him to try and make a play for the game earlier, but instead of going for the second TC, and not necessarily just going for the second TC, but prioritizing villager production, right? If he had tried to just go for more Golem, potentially some Camels as well. Should have been in a very good spot, but... Yeah, in the end, he does manage to get a strong enough lead to take the game over here. So now, Whale 2, Hong 1 after game number 3. Let's go through the achievements to see what we get for game number 4. We'll see that for military, Nawil ends up getting a better KD, about 6 to 5 over there, like almost exactly 6 to 5. For economy, we have a stronger economy for Nawil as well. And then on top of that, we're going to see for society, a much stronger society for Nawil with a lot of extra villagers for the villager max count. A lot fewer losses over here despite having the most villagers. This is, of course, putting Nawil in a very good spot. This is... Only 12 villagers going down for Noel throughout the game, while Hong ended up losing 18. So well done. And well to Hong won. Only one more game needed for the red player to move on to the decider sets. Fantastic. Leaderboard ID 1 needs to be 3. Are you sure? On the website, the API section said that ID 1 was for random map 1v1 and ID 3 was for deathmatch. Deathmatch 1v1. Anyway. Welcome everyone then to game number 4. We're gonna have Hoang up in the north. He'll be playing with Chatters, 
Meanwhile, Nawil is playing with Burgundians down the south with the blue and the red colors, respectively. It's a zero to the E. One. Dead match. Are you taking a look at the same thing I am taking a look at? On AO2.net slash hashtag API, the second table which says leaderboard says game name. Oh, you are correct. That is Age of Empires Definitive Edition. Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition needs to be 3. You're absolutely correct. I, I, I mistook that and, and use Age of Empires 1. Definitive edition. My bad. What's up? You're correct. So now that should be better. Yep. <laughs> Still not. Doesn't work. I don't know, man. Yeah, I have no idea what the issue is over here. Maybe if we add Nightbot again. I don't know, this is something that I'm certainly going to take a look off stream. I don't know if today, perhaps today. But it's definitely not the highest priority. Hey, there we go, it's working! Yes! So it didn't need to have Nightbot in the URL, even if I'm not using Nightbot. Alright. No problem then, I don't need to take a look at it anymore. <laughs> I, I guess we can potentially change it also. We can we can add a... We changed nothing but it works. Oh yeah, I, I, I changed it. I had removed Nightbot from the URL before because there was an example on the API page, page without Nightbot and I am not using Nightbot, but in the end it was apparently needed even for stream elements. But we could maybe add a command that changes the parameters to search for team game ELO perhaps. Or, you know, what would be really cool if there was a way for you to uh, send a single request and get both the 1v1, the team game, uh, Empire Wars, ELO as well. I think that would be nice. Just imagine the mass pizza of flaming camels running into Burgundian cav cavaliers. We'll see. Alright, let's take a look at the civilization. Sorry about that. If you're watching this on YouTube, you probably don't care about the commands for Twitch. And we've been spending a lot of time trying to fix that, but now it's working. So, taking a look at, at the civilizations once again, the home play with Tartars means that he's gonna get free Thumbring and free Parthen Tactics upon reaching the castle in Imperial Ages. Besides that, Tartars will also have 25% higher damage against enemy units when fighting from a higher elevation, and that, that is on top of the generic bonus that the game gives you, alright? On top of that, we also see for Tartars... There we are. On top of that, we also see for Tatters 50% extra food that they collect from herdables, as well as two additional sheaves spawning underneath each newly built TC starting on the castle age. Well, for the team bonus, they have two extra line of sight and cavalry arch type units. Now, while we'll playing with Burgundians, we'll get instead a 40% foot discount on eco upgrades, which he gets one H earlier. So you can see that he's going up to the fuel age, but he's already gone for double bit X. On top of that, Burgundians will also have access to the Cavalry Upgrade in the Castle Age. They're going to have access to... They're going to get a 50% discount on Stable Upgrades as well. And then in addition to that, they have 25% higher attack on Gunpowder Units with a team bonus being food generation from Relics in addition to Gold. I hear you're doing a Geopardy contest. Yes! Yes, after today's stream. Um, I'm actually not really sure when... The start time is though. I th think it's. Let me check. Hold on. Because based on that, of course, I may not be able to cover the second set. Hold on. Uh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's fine. It's not. It's not 20 GMT, it's 23.30 GMT. Yes. So it's fine. We have time. We can cover two sets over here easily. Good 
pressure. Yeah, nice reaction over here from Noel as well. In the end, he's unable to get too much damage done against Holland Scout, though. And the stable's already up for Huang. It's not really going, though, for the scouts just yet. I think it's probably just because he realized that the walls were already up for Noel. So trying to go for scouts over here would be kind of risky because he would be going into the TC if he wanted to ever get on the back of Noel's economy. And if we take a look at Huang's point of view as well, the bull player doesn't really know about the back line over here. He might have seen the failed tree, the failed tree, but it doesn't seem like he is aware of the potential for damage over there. And to be fair, Noel could very easily have just gone for a few quick walls over here and be fine against scouts, so it is understandable that Hoan does not want to invest into scouts, even if he went for the stable, basically, as soon as he got to the fuel each while Noel instead. Noel is... going to go for scouts. Yes, he's got two already. Here we are. So you can look the south over here towards the east. And we'll get in a market up. But he doesn't have anywhere near enough resource to go up to the castle. H. Hong instead. He ends up selling the stone. He ends up prioritizing going up to the castle H instead. And there's a very good adaptation because the moment he realized about the walls, he stopped going for the scouts, right? Because he did not go for walls himself, Hong's resources are looking stronger. He did not spend a lot of time going for the walls. He did not spend a lot of resources trying to get the walls up. So he does manage to click out to the castle significantly earlier. No will instead. Well, he's gotten the walls up, but it came at a cost. He had to use the villagers to get them up. He had to use resources to get the walls up. And because he was the only player going for any extra scouts, that delayed him even further now. We're gonna see Noel go up to the castle age so much later compared to Hoang. As a matter of fact, he sold the stone as well. But he's so much later to it. Castle is going to be here for Hong in the next 20 seconds, while Noel might be able to click up to the Castle H in the next 20 seconds, but he will be so far behind to the next one. Hong's economy is, once again, the stuff of, you know, dreams here. Four food workers, that large range, so he's going to try and prioritize military production once again. Won't really be able to queue too many extra villages unless he fixes his food economy situation. But, without larger ranges, he should be in a good spot to start putting pressure very soon. He's got the cavalry archers coming out. It's going to put him in a very good spot. And now, well, now he's coming for stone walls. Oh man, this just fails. Trouble for the red player. Not necessarily the fact that he's going for uh, walls itself, right? But what it is that he is expecting to come from Huang and how uncomfortable he is in his current position. This certainly spells trouble. He's not feeling confident whatsoever. How's the series been so far? Hey, Mulberry boy. It's been good. It's been good. Uh, Huang managed to get a very interesting game in game number one. Now, he's looking a little bit stronger for game number four. We'll see if he can equalize the series over here. Noel instead. Noel is... Well, on a stronger work account. Huang is getting a lot of idle villager time, or actually idle TC time, sorry, once again, because he did not really sort his food economy on time. He's going to be the one to put the most pressure as well. The only player with military units left. He 
Is that a reason Hoang has struggled? It's like he can't play more than one civilization. Yeah, yeah. It's like he cannot get a full grasp of the game's concepts, especially the concept of macro. He's coming in though with the cavalry archers, completely disregarding the TC. It's going to end up losing one unit, but you know what? He's got five cavalry archers still, and he will take the villagers down. One village goes down, the second one survives for the time being from the wheel, but it's not going to be the last bit of pressure, of course, coming in for the bull player. There's another village going down very soon. Remember that he gets Thumbring for free, so these cavalry archers, unlike standard units, are already 100% accurate against static units. Here we go. Beautiful. More cavalry archers coming over. That's going to be the second army for Hong. He ended up pushing and it will slumberjacks away from these lumber camps. Now he's going to end up pushing the gold miners away from the right hand side gold. And the world's economy is in a world of trouble. He might not have anywhere near as much idle TC tank compared to Huang, but he's taking six villager losses already. Which puts him only two workers ahead compared to Huang, but also because his economy has been so inefficient. You take a look at the worker efficiency in the last minute it's so much higher for Huang. it doesn't matter if the bull player is behind in work account what matters is that he's been able to make better use of those villages and if you take a look at this gallery economy time is better for Huang. he's diving in once again with the cavalry archers he's coming in right away check this out oh boy Here you go. Huang cannot do too much around the tower over there, but he'll still manage to find a few villagers. And you know what? If he kept on scouting, he would be able to find these villagers down the south too. No wills. Few knights are not going to be a contest for Hong's military. Plus, the will player does have access to camels as well, so he can go for it. We see more villages going down by the minute. Yes, sir. The Scorpion is going to crumble over here as well. Hong's pressure is relentless. Takes the Scorpion down. Keeps a good amount of HP on uh, Cavalry Archers. It's not going to be the best. And if it was a melee army, right? If it was a knight army, this would definitely be pretty bad. But because he's going to have range units, and these do not really need to engage, point blank range, he can just roam around and keep on... Taking more and more villages, right? But it's not going to be the end of it. We see a second group of units coming over as well. And my lord, now will keeps on losing villagers slowly but surely. He's hemorrhaging economy. And go long enough. It's gonna run out of life. Strong work account right now for home, go figure. Just because of the eco KD over here. They were in the bull player. Fantastic. Yeah, and Hong's going back. It's not too bad, you know. For the bull player, not too shabby. He's been in a very good position. Ever since he got the first group of cavalry archers, go over here and filter to the back of Noel's economy, he's been able to stay on top. In the very beginning, it was not by villager count, just by worker efficiency, but now 
Well, now it's not really going to do too much anyway. Beautiful. Some knights coming in for Hong as well are going to just make this army a little bit more complete. And Noel, Noel, he's been able to survive so far and keep the work account somewhat decent. Like right now, he's managed to get a higher work account compared to Hong. But the problem is, this economy has been so inefficient for so long because of Hong's push over here that Noel is not really in a good position. It seems like he's got more villages because he does. He's got five extra villages compared to Hong. But take a look at this gathering economy time. It's ridiculous. The worker efficiency throughout the game has been so much higher for Hoan. At 80% versus about 64% or so for Noel. And even if the blue player ends up getting cleaned up on the back over here, we're going to see another group of units coming over. And I think this might be the straw that breaks Noel's back. Is it? Well, he is losing a lot of villagers. Deku KD is going out to almost training already for Hoang. Noel shouldn't really be able to keep on. Going for much longer over here, we'll see. So yeah, the, the, the Elo Command uh, should work right now. Of course, you'll need an argument. Yeah, and Noel is not... Looking particularly great, and once again, along absolutely disregarding the potential for damage from the TC, just trying to come in right away, and he's gonna be able to. The gates do not connect to the goal, so it's open, and now Well goes out to call the GG. As Huang will take game number four and force a full series against Noel. Wow. All right. Let's uh, take a look at the achievements then. We're jumping into the final game of the series. It should work without arguments, but I call it close enough. Oh, it should work without arguments, but what for? What what does it do without arguments? So for me, Terry, we have a better KD for Hoang by a little bit. It's going to be about five to four for economy. We have a stronger economy for Hoang about collecting about collecting about 2,000 extra resources. For society as well, uh, villager max counts going to be higher for Noel. It didn't really matter. He ended up taking the most losses. 21 villagers going down throughout the game. And, uh, yeah, Hong going for eco upgrades. Go figure. <laughs> Did manage to get wheelbarrow in the end as well. Uh, had for the most part just dull bit axe over here, but it, it doesn't seem like the extra eco upgrades that Noel got. By taking advantage of a civilization bonus actually helped much of anything. And here we are in game number five, the final one. The Scyther game of the series, of course. Whoever comes out on top here is going to move on to the Scyther series, the round of 18, for a potential spot in the Golden League. But the civilizations, Hong is playing with Huns, Noel is playing with Japanese, and we'll see that Hong gets with his civilization. Yes. 10 to 20% cheaper cavalry archer units in the castle and Imperial Ages, and we know that he can make use of it. We already saw him in the previous game make use of it very successfully. Besides that, Huns will also provide 50% accuracy on trebuchets as opposed to 15%. 200 population support from the get-go at the expense of 100 wood upon starting the game, and... For the team bonus, Hoang will have, uh, with Hans, 20% faster working stables. Now, well, instead, playing with Japanese gets 50% discount on drop-off buildings. So the mining camps, lumber camps, and mills will come in cheaper. But then, in addition to that, we'll see for Japanese 33% faster attacking infantry units starting in the fuel age. As well as 5, 10, 15. 20% faster work in fishing ships with twice the HP and plus two Pierce armor. And the uh, efficiency boost is going to be dependent on the current age, right? So 5, 10, 15, 20% the Darkfield Castle and Imperial Ages. Well, for the team bonus, 
they will get throughout the game 50% extra line of sight on galley type ships. So galleys for galleys and galleon will have extra line of sight for Noel civilization. The difference between this one and Atacama, of course, is that the wood is going to be properly distributed around the map in this one, while Atacama is going to have the wood at the center for the most part. And we saw Noel take full advantage of the wood generation on Atacama to get ahead in the game. This time around, he won't be able to do that necessarily. And if we take a look at the map generation, you're going to see that Hong, for instance, he's got already one wood on the back over here, right? Which is going to be super safe. He's got another one over here as well. He's got another one over here. So it's not going to be quite as easy for Noel to potentially come forward and try to get like a single tower around here and, and, and just push all the lumberjacks away from Huang, right? That's not going to be the case. We still have extra wood lines. Besides that, for the wood player, he's got a main goal up in the north. Secondary gold is going to be um, further north, very, very far away. And the other secondary goal is towards the southeast over here, very far away as well. So not the best map generation for Mr. Huang in terms of gold. This one is even exposed. And because we have the hills over here in front of the gold, we could see instead of a tower come up over here, potentially the tower come up over here. And that would be enough for the red player to deny this goal from Huang. And because the other two are so far away, that would certainly put Huang in a little bit of a rougher position. Taking a look at the map generation for Noel instead, we'll see that the red player... He's got the main goal up in the north towards the east. He's got the secondary goal towards the southwest. The other secondary goal is going to be towards the southwest, even further away. So very, very far away. And this goal is on the hill, so it's not going to be quite as vulnerable as Hong's, for instance. And it's not too bad, you know? Taking a look at... Yeah, the wood situation. It's going to be pretty similar as well. He's got one wood over here. He's got another wood over here. So it's going to be fine. He's got another wood over here as well. Yeah, and he's going to be okay. Man, it feels so weird today because of the new chat overlay. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel off for some reason. I it, it, it just so awkward. I think it's probably because I need to pay attention to not selecting stuff randomly, right? Because if I do, then the chat disappears. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. It's probably taking some cognitive power away from, from casting the game. <laughs> I, I'll get used to it, though. It's no problem. The one thing that, once again, I'm not too happy about, though, is Capture it not displaying the map name because I have the time controls over here. Yeah. Oh, well, what you gonna do? This is going to bring the tutorial, right? Or the documentation? Yeah. All right. Who is Noel? Noel is a high level Argentinian player. If I'm not mistaken, you can do hashtag Noel if you'd like to get more information about him. Uh, otherwise, you can do exclamation mark ELO space Noel to get just ELO information. I, do, I don't think the ELO command counts for nationality, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Hashtag Noel. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, what's up? Oh, he doesn't have a... A dashboard profile. Or he's not being tracked by the dashboard. Interesting. Okay. Well, yeah. You, you can just get ELO information then by doing exhibition mark ELO space and a whale. But he's one of the top Argentinian players. He is not going to be quite in the same league as Nikov, for instance. Or potentially even Twig, but... It's pretty high still. Yeah, 2K1 is... Not too shabby, you know, rank 152. It's good. No problem. Je suis adorable. <laughs> nice name. So PLH gets here. Hong already gets the arch range up. And Noel on the other hand. 
He's coming in with the militias. We saw this. Couldn't get, really get too much damage done because of the quick walls already from Hoang. But he does manage to get though. Very nice. Sneaky duck over here. Alright, check that out. That Hoang is aware of, but he's not reacting to. No fire guns, no nothing coming out. Meanwhile, Nawil is going to be the only player going for Navy. This is really bad. For Mr. Hoang. He's taking too long to react to it. And it's not only going to be that, but also we have pressure on land from Nawil as he's going for arches right now. That's going to allow him to take potentially the village down over here if he plays his cards right. He doesn't really have fletching right now, so the archer's going to take some time to take the village down. But this is some good pressure from Nawil. You remove MBL's ult and it's almost top 100? Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about if I... If, if were there any Argentinian players, I love how international this game is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. You have players from pretty much every country. Not at the very top, perhaps, but wouldn't be possible, right? But still good. Yeah, and you know, Hong is not going for any navy at all. Well, Nawil. Nawil's already managed to get ahead in villager count, or actually worker count, because of the fishing ships. He's managed to stay ahead in military count as well, but he's struggling still, though, Hong. Man, just click out to the Castle Age a little bit earlier. And this might be one of those situations of Castle Age into GG. However, Hong, if he just focuses his entire economy into full pressure over here on land, he might actually be able to offset for the fact that he does not have any water presence anymore. And Mari Karate, thank you so much for the Prime Game Sub. You know that I love the Prime Subs. Free for anyone with an Amazon Prime subscription. I still get the revenue share. So give them all business box to me. Give me all the business box. All of them. And so now uh, how T90 is in USA's top 3. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very, very strong player. He put in the work for sure. Not only USA's top 3, but also I think it's in the, in the world's top 75 or so. It, it was top 100 before. Uh, I think he's gotten a little bit higher than that, right? I think he's been grinding a little bit more these days. Zero on food is like two less than his tender economy, yeah. <laughs> well, this is kind of surprising though, because if he's making a play for a stable over here, but he's not going for uh, food, that pretty much settles the debate. It's going to be just full cover the archer, but the problem is that he doesn't really have the production. Bailings to go for it pretty heavily. He's got the single Archer range over here, so Hong won't be able to go for cavalry archers won't be able to go for knights Too much of anyway and the whale Well, the whale is 13 workers ahead right now. That is a huge lead at this stage. He is ahead of military count He's got a stable on the way and he does need to go out to the castle age himself of course at some point, but you know, it's so long as he's able to close the wall over here. You cannot really risk leaving the walls open, just walling towards the DC, especially after what happened in the previous game, if you're in a wall's position. So, definitely the red player does need to consider going for... Oops. Sorry about that. Definitely, he needs to consider going for the walls closing this up, right? Like so. Because Knights, man, we see how Hoang doesn't really care about the TCs, especially now that Nawil doesn't really have any villagers over here on the new TC. Hoang can just come in with the Knights and start getting some good damage. Don't forget to drink water, sometimes you only notice that you're thirsty. Um, drink? Well, I try to make it so that I am never thirsty. I have been drinking water, but that is a good reminder. If you are thirsty, you're already dehydrated, they say. Dasic. I like to see Red add more fish. He's got, he's got full control of all ponds. He should have, a, like, 15 fish. Yeah, that is true. That is true. He is going for a few more, too. 
And that will certainly help wonders to get to the castle HASAP, especially when Huang is... You know, he's been in the castle for quite a while already. No one doesn't really have any vision of what Huang's going for, so for all he knows, Huang might be going for extra TCs and he might be catching up. So Noel could definitely try and take better advantage of uh, the fact that he's got all the pawns and he's been trying to 12 fidget chips right now. And once again, he definitely wants to close the gap over here. He does not want to stay open. Huang does not care about the TC. You know this. We saw it in the previous game. Plus, with the siege coming out over here, the battering ram on the way now. Huang will start putting pressure, and if there is nothing stopping him from getting to the TC, now we'll mind up losing it, and he might not be able to get to the Castle H at all in the end. Here we go. You should remove chats, right, to post links before spammers count the town. I have, um, I have let the chat post links basically since forever because we never had an issue. Uh, that that's something that I think I'll probably change whenever we start having issues as opposed to just banning it outright. Especially because we don't have mods all the time. to approve the links. And was trying to balance his economy. He does have a little bit of a of a balance problem right now. Man, this is awful. He's a hit by 23 workers yet. He is so far behind. He does not have access to this goal anymore. And we take a look and we know that the secondary goals are towards the south. We saw this earlier and he's not made a play for any of these goals yet. Even though he knows about both of them. He's got the market but he's not tried to sell any wood. He's not tried to balance his economy instead. He's coming forward with scouts. He'll try to get some damage done. He strikes gold as the villagers from Hong are completely exposed over here, but no villagers are going down at all. Okay, one, two villagers go down. In the end, he does manage to find some damage over here. Hong goes down 26 workers. The scouts get taken down in the end, but you know what? Hong doesn't really care about economy so long as he's able to slowly but surely grow his military even further. So now what he really needs over here is defense against Hong's push. And fuel age units will not cut it. He's going to need something else, and unfortunately, so long as he stays in the fuel age, he won't be able to defend against Hong. And take a look at this. The RTC is going down, guys. Now, Whale doesn't have the resources to keep this TC up forever. And take a look at this uh, the wood over there going down dramatically as Nawil is trying to repair this TC. For dear life, is not going to be able to do it. And the TC goes down. And the Whale won't be able to go up to the Castle Age at all this game. And Hong is doing it. He's making it work. He's getting things done. With what he's got. He's making the best out of his position. Now. With no walls. No protections for Noel. No TCs to garrison villages in. Two knights. Might prove to be Noel's demise over here. And my lord. Hong is... Just build different. You you know that you don't want to see this, right? It's it's pretty much over. So Noel is going to call it here. And guys, Hong against all odds over here. While well, being extremely behind in economy, managed to get so much damage done with an overall small amount of military. Well, Noel struggles big time to defend himself, and that's going to give Hong the victory over here. 3-2 to two, to move on to the round of 18. The decider sets, while well, Noel gets taken out of the tournament. Yeah. Let's take a look at the achievements. We'll see for military a uh, better KD for Hong in the end. We're going to see for economy. 
a stronger economy for Noel by a lot. Still struggle though to make anything happen with it. And for society. Yeah. Much better for Noel over here. But it did not matter. It's just how long is unstoppable. How long has that mining camp foundation been there? Forever. Forever. How the heck he lacks food on 13 fishes? Well, he was going for scouts quite a bit. We saw he sent some of the scouts forward. He got the TC working as well. And uh, between scouts and, and villagers, that, that, that makes it very, very hard to get a good amount of food up. He did not really have that many fish in the end. 